you have tuned into the sixth session of the swimming knowledge series organized by the Rainbow Swimming Academy, which is powered by Sustagen School 6 Plus and Sustagen and sponsored by Glory Swim Shop. I would like to invite all parents and swimmers to join in for today's inspiring session as we have two amazing speakers lined up. At the end of the Q&A session, yesterday's winners and the question of the day will be announced. Now, I would like to invite Coach Julian to speak a few words. Uh, Coach Kastrin, I think you just invited me, but I'm assuming because I uh, didn't hear the last bit. So oh. can you wave it to my turn? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, yes. hi, 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 hi. You are looking good today. Thank you. <laughs> but then again, you look good every day. Uh, welcome swimmers, uh, parents, and all our coaches. Fantastic. Um, gosh, here I am trying to lose weight. Similar to um, postpone the uh, topic on a very important topic of our physio, co uh, I would say, coach today. Why not? Um, but on the injury prevention, Kasun, it's going to come tomorrow, right? Yes, tomorrow, yeah. A very, very important one. Even we see young athletes today, um, some of them carrying ailments, um, probably sometimes when they do multi sports, so, or if they're overtrained, so it's for all. And we look forward to that uh, tomorrow. So dear Udesh has to wait patiently, like all of us. Um, just uh, for food, uh, here's my take. Um, you know, I was at the Commonwealth Games, the last Commonwealth Games, and our relay team comprising of Matthew, Kyle, the two Abyssinga brothers. We had um, Akalanka and Chalanta. Now, they made historical, uh, it was historical where they uh, qualified to get into the finals. Um, fortunately, we were DQ'd in the finals, so that's part of life. But to get in the finals is good. But you know the other sports like weightlifting, we had won medals. And the weightlifting coach, Mr. Vikramasinghe, I call him Vicky, Coach Vicky. One day he came to me at the village and said, Julian, me wage swimmers la ape lifters la toda kano. That our swimmers are eating more than the weightlifters, and the weightlifters are the strongest, biggest, and they seem to be eating the most. And it's true. I saw the four of them, and they are the fastest swimmers we have in our nation. And Every meal they eat, they switch on another part of the brain to say, I need to eat right. And they, we use the word mountain plates. They, he, they, massive, massive loads of food. Every meal. I've seen Charanta before an event, the meal he has before the event, the amount he eats, I even used, I would get scared. I was like, Charanta, you don't want to swim with a full stomach like that. To eat all that food and then he eats it and then he gets in so i think guys the best thing is to overeat over eat and then when you start putting on weight weight that you don't need then you can start cutting down we sri lankans the other day i had a talk show on papare and i said probably sri lankans are one of the south indians are some one of the smallest people in the world but you actually look at our diet how many are swimmers after training in the morning, they rush to school. Most of you train in the morning. We'll eat pastries. So I'd, you know, so with this, we have a lot of wrong, wrong habits. We want to swim fast. You want to swim fast as, as fast as Matthew. If you, you just want to swim fast, you just got to start eating. And um, yeah, so, so make sure like in swimming, when you swim, you you're swimming, you're thinking of technique, you're thinking of speed. When you get to the wall, don't switch off. Part of the brain that tells you how to do a proper turn, that light has to be switched on. And you go and do a proper turn. It's not a break from swimming. 
So now when it comes to hydration, when it comes to food, switch on. Every time you're sipping, we have a rule. I don't know if Kanita said that. In our team, every 20 minutes, you have to drink 200, 300 ml, 300 ml of water. So in an hour, they've consumed one liter. In two hours, two liters. And of course, we do have a toilet break because we don't give a toilet break. You know, swimmers have some naughty habits at times. So please remember this hydration, the nutrition, and the rest. We had a discussion, guys. We had a discussion uh, yesterday after the talk, all of us coaches. And we said no more seven to eight hours. It has to be eight hours. It has to be eight hours. Funny, we had a, I had a chat with Kas, uh, Karnita, Coach Kanita and Sachil about rainbows. And we decided next time if swimmers don't get the eight hours, they will come late for swimming. They will sleep that extra hour, extra 30 minutes to recover. So we're going to put that almost like a rule. Saying get the eight hours. So imagine if you want to get up at four in the morning. Then you should be in bed at eight o'clock. So here are good things for us. Fantastic thing yesterday. Over to you, Kasun, and look forward to these two fantastic speakers. I can't believe it. And I'm gonna it's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Julian, sir. Um, before we start off, uh, I would like to issue a few instructions uh, to all of you who are listening in. Uh, especially the swimmers. Um, the chat box will be open 7.30 p.m. onwards. Uh, it is open only for questions. Um, those who misuse the chat box for greetings and other unnecessary conversations will be removed from today's program and they will not be able to join in again. Common courtesy and respect will go a, a long way, guys. And I think it's very disrespectful to the, to the speakers uh, the way you all chat and uh, try to uh, put on jokes while the lecture is going on. So uh, we have actually already we have identified a few and we will be speaking to their respective coaches by next week. Please switch off your video mode to increase uh, the connectivity. If your parents haven't joined in, uh, I would uh, like you all to actually call them up and tell them to sit with you for this session. Okay, let's move on to our first speaker, Eranga Fernando, who is the swimming head coach of Ladies College Colombo. Eranga is an old Thomian and he was the captain of the swimming team during the year 2001. He has won the 200, 400 free and 100, 200 butterfly on numerous occasions at nationals and he held the national record for the 200 meter butterfly. Eranga has represented Sri Lanka at the South Asian Games, Asia Pacific Games, and many more international swimming competitions, and has captained the national side as well. He has won multiple medals at the South Asian Games as well. He, he, he has won, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Eranga graduated from the University of Kalnia and has completed CIM and the diploma in banking and financing and is employed at HSBC as the manager of the retail managing and wealth management department. Now, he will tell you how he did all of that. Over to you, Aranga. Thanks, Coach Kashun. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Firstly, thank you for having me. Um, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And uh, I sat in some of the uh, sessions before and uh, absolute privilege to be in the in presence of all the speakers that have come before me and yet to come afterwards. Um, so Julian has been um, you know, on me trying to get me to come and speak to you about this topic to his swimmers for some time. And I've been dodging this for the longest time. Uh, I mean, Churchill always said, uh, don't waste the crisis. So here we are. Um, so so let's get started. Um, um, so student athlete, right? Um, the topic that we're speaking on. Um, I have about twenty minutes for to get you know speak to you guys about this uh, topic, which is you know not enough of time, but I will try and uh, put in as much as I possibly can. Um, now, in in definition itself, you know it, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, student athlete is a full-time student who is an athlete 
um, you know, enrolled in, in, a, in an education institute, right? Um, so I'm not going to try and, my objective here is not going to try and bore you with all the technicalities and the stats and, uh, you know, theory of, uh, of, of, of how you can manage both, right? Um, what, what I will try and do instead is I'm going to try and relate this to, uh, to me as a swimmer and, and as a student how, how, and how I managed it, uh, what it was like for me. Um, so I'm going to try and relate some of the uh, uh, fundamentals of balancing this uh, through my experience, um, which might be more relevant to you guys, right, as swimmers and, uh, and as students. Um, now, th now, there are various studies that we're going to go on to show that, you know, uh, athletes uh, who, you know, who, who are student athletes do, do quite a lot better or relatively better than, uh, you know, students that uh, don't do any sports. Now, that's, that's, that's fact and, and that's, that's there to find, you know, anyway, you just can Google it and that's there, right? Um, however, there is no one way to this, right? There is no set method of doing this. Um, you do one thing better than the other. There is no way of actually doing this. Uh, so what is best for you is what you should follow, right? So there are different variables, you know, training, competition schedules, exams, how you're going to study, all this pitches in into um, how you're going to manage both the studies and also being an athlete, right? Um, so, so I, uh, Kasun actually mentioned some of the, uh, you know, academics things that I, that I went through. And then the first thing that most of the people that actually pick up is, oh, you went to the University of California, right? So local uni must have been smart, right? right? Throughout. So, so studying wouldn't have been a problem to you. Um, so you would have absorbed things much faster than usual, right? Uh, so it would have been easy. Um, actually, that wasn't the case for me. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was it was an absolute nightmare. Um, um, for your information, I was, I was about grade five or six. Uh, I was practically one before the last in class, right? <laughs> I had to just beat one guy off, right? Um, so it was, it was, for me to improve from there was, was, was a struggle, right? Um, I remember my mom, um, and the first time that she actually uh, brought this studying piece up because at about, about, when I was about 10 years old, I, I started swimming uh, in an international maze. So uh, I was well versed into um, swimming. I, I knew that was what I wanted to do at an early age, and that's one thing that I enjoyed doing. So my parents let me do it. Um, so my mom, you know, came up to me and said, "Okay, listen, I, I you know, this studying thing. Are you, are you gonna, you know, I don't want you to do all, you know, eight nine subjects. You know, just pick one, um, sit, study for it for a couple of days, and see how it goes, right?" Um, so I thought, "Okay, fine. I got nothing to lose, right? Let's 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 try that." Right? I took two days, that sat down, study for it. Uh, I think I got to be good marks about 70 or something um, what I didn't realize then uh, that I realized now is that what my mom was trying to do is instill the belief that I could actually you know study well, I was already doing my swimming um, but I could also actually do my studies and then and then that I could also realize that on my own it's not about my parents telling me you know you can do this you have to do it uh, but me realizing it on my own right and that went a long way so the next three years, I went from being you know, one before the last in class to top five, you know, consistently. Um, and that took a lot of hard work. It didn't happen overnight. It took me a lot of time to actually do it. So it was a lot of hard work and studies didn't come easily for me. So that's, that's laying context for what I'm trying to tell you guys uh, further on down, right? Um, so, so does it have to be a choice? Um, do, you, do you need to make a choice between, um, you know, being a student and an athlete? Um, can you do both? Um, see, the simplest of answer would be yes, right? If you ask me, it's very simple and you say yes, right? But behind that yes is a lot of hard work and a lot of commitment. Right. If not for that, you cannot balance both out. Uh, you need to, um, but it's going to be a lot of hard work and commitment. Without that, you you just cannot. Right. So going into certain certain things, how you how do you plan and execute um, um, the balance between you know being a swimmer and and a student? Right. Um, 
see, one thing we do is with swimming, we, we as swimmers, I mean, we get the schedules out, the time comes out, uh, you know what you're doing for the rest of the year, you know what your events are, um, you start planning your, your cycles, your, your loads, your, your tapers, you know, what meets you're going to swim for. And that's all done, right? And we, and we, and we do this very really religiously as swimmers, right? And as coaches also. Um, what, what we sometimes miss to do is we, where, where, do we, where do we patch in our academics into this? Um, how, does, how does everything that goes on in schools, uh, how do we manage that into this particular calendar? If you are serious about swimming, then, then you need, while you work on your swimming calendar, you also need to pitch in your, um, your academics into that particular calendar as well. And that's a con conversation that you need to have. Right. Um, I, I sat in on one of the sessions where Coach Shehan um, touched on LTAD um, and he, he spoke on quality uh, in, in terms of quantity at times. And, and that's, that's really key for, for, for making that balance. Um, when, you, when you're going to, going to um, you know, uh, scheduling and trying to plan out how you're going to do both of this, I think you need to come to a point where you need to be, uh, becomes a question of quality and quantity, right? Um, quality over quantity, sorry. Uh, so that, that, that's very important. Um, so in, in very simply for me, it, it was always, it was, it was always a long term and a short term plans for me. Um, so a short term, um, short term plan was mostly my term exams and uh, you know I already had I already knew what, what my what my swimming calendar looked like um, so I would map in my um, you know exams into that calendar um, short term uh, would be something like a term exam um, and I would prepare for a term exam right throughout um, see the problem with term exams which we have now is we we shut down uh, for weeks on end for a term exam uh, Again, debatable. Um, my personal opinion is uh, you shouldn't be off for about two weeks trying to do a term exam, which, which doesn't sound right to me. You cannot study what you did for, for the whole term within that two weeks and it's cramming. I didn't make any sense to me. Now, I'm guilty of doing it. Um, <laughs> that's how I know. Uh, but but when, I, when, I, when I realized it, 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 it became a lot more easier for me to actually, I, as I got more serious about my swimming and I, I, I you know, started swimming for nationals and everything, I, I had to be able to manage that better. So that meant I had to study the whole term through. And of course I had to do that one or two days off, uh, but you know, it, it wasn't like these weeks on, weeks on end where you have to completely shut down. So you need to manage that. So in the short term, Maybe look at those um, term exams. Uh, now, other countries have, you know, uh, you know, we could take a look at the US college system and all that. You, you, you get uh, the interaction between your coaches, your professors, or your teachers, and your parents and the athlete who will come up with your plan. Um, it's more structured. There, there is more, more leverage on, on, on how you do your academics and also how you, uh, how you manage your. Uh, you know, studies and then it's all in built right um, uh, Sri Lanka well unfortunately has a long way to go uh, in that department I see it in, in various schools it's it's uh, not just an uh, you know one one problem in one school it, it's it's there and, it, and it's something that you know uh, structure is such that it you, you can't really uh, do anything about it at the moment but uh, hopefully it does change um, but the thing is, as a swimmer, I think it's really important that you do have that conversation with your coach, your teachers, your parents especially, and make sure that your understanding of what you want to do is always established and that you do that, right? Um, see, I used, to, I used to write down, I, I mean, everyone has these logbooks, right? We, we, we maintain logbooks in terms of swimmers. We used to write down our workouts and stuff. And, and this is something I had to do. So what I used to do is, um, put down my studies of, onto that logbook as well. I used to write down how much of studies do I have to do over the day. So, for example, if I had two hours of studies, I would put that two hours there. What did I do for that two hours? Um, did I cover my cover my certain topics that I wanted to cover for that day? I would write on my logbook. So I always had my swimming and my academics in one place, right? So I always knew what I needed to do. Did I do that? And if I didn't, I would always go back and I knew I missed something. I would always try and cover it back, right? Now, now, this is this is something of of, of a plan, uh, but 
you as swimmers and athletes you know um, and students we we go into a routine right your typical routine would be um like what 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 i'm i'm guessing it hasn't changed too much is like 4 4:30 in the morning you're up you're at, at training um you're off to school uh, if you are an athlete that does two or three sports which most of the time uh, most of our guys do um i used to play water polo so i used to be playing with water polo um and then i'm off to swimming again and then i'm back right so that that was my basic swimming schedule uh now i had to find um a routine where i actually had to make sure that i actually put in my studies as well right um o levels and a levels are different uh, different scenarios in itself right o levels and a levels are, are a longer term plan for me uh, in 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 my view um it was more for like one and a half years preparation kind of thing o levels was a little bit less a levels was more, more like one and a half years preparation for me um but but what we need to understand is you your typical routine uh needs to involve your academics as well you need to try and pitch in what what is the studies uh, and what you want to do for that particular day right um so for me um, i mean i used to bus it to swimming right um, so so 154 155 those buses take forever to go right uh, i never gets anywhere on time right um so i just i just to go back 10 minutes the other way uh, just to get to the bus or that uh, you know the station so i can get a seat right so so there was i understood at that that time i had traveling time i had about one and a half to two hours of traveling time if i had could find a seat um i have one and a half to two hours of traveling time which i could actually read something um so so i used to do that i used to read um whatever i could uh, my school stuff um and anything had had that that had desk work i would leave out those that was to be done when i got back after swimming um so typically i would have i would put in about two and a half hours i wanted to so so one and a half hours is covered in in terms of you know travel time and i would come back home um and i had about an hours um hour of studies and then i would switch back uh, you know switch off and then go to sleep because you know i had to have the test because this, this is on on and on right um so how do you find the time um so 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 you need to find your own thing like i said right that that is what one thing I, that i found out right um so you have to adjust your swimming schedule or you have to adjust your um, study schedule it it really is about how you how you do that um now for my o levels um i'm just like i said i'm just going to relate it to certain things that are that, that are from my uh, my experience right for my o levels um i i had to uh, you know i was swimming for my um was swimming um for soft games at that particular time and uh, i also had um, my o levels coming up to the end of the year um so i had a bit of a bit of a break in between i had about a month or three weeks or something that uh, after the meet uh, but i had to make sure that i actually swam by throughout uh, so i got to the games and also uh, got qualified first and got to the games and then also did my o levels um so you know being the smart muscle i am I always ask my mom um, i always had this conversation with my parents and so that i i know what my expectations were you know pull the fast one to us and say okay listen uh, um, can i can i just uh, you know uh, do my o levels just pass right um, i mean i always thought it was this and stepping stone for to do your a levels um okay um you know debatable but this is what i i was under the impression so my mom was my parents was like no no that's not going to happen right that you you got to set a set a set yourself a goal uh we understand that you got to you know your priority at the moment is to swim for your country that's fine but you also have priority to you make sure that you get past your a level and do it well so we said well you know about you know, the d's at that time right uh, not a's so proper for my five d's and Three C's. That, that's something. Something I remember that we <laughs> settled on. Um, but but I but I ended up getting. Um, I did get qualified. I went for the games. I medaled. I didn't get five D's. I got about three D's or something of that sort. Uh, but the rest of it is. Um, but enough to get get through to my A levels, which which was the most important thing for me at that particular time. Uh, now I was clear. uh of what my expectations were because i had the conversation with my parents um and and my coach and that you know um and how we were going to plan that particular year. and that was very important right um as a swimmer and as an athlete you need to manage those expectations you need to understand what your goals are at the beginning of the year itself um o levels 
is 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 something um, for me was a stepping stone. Like I said, uh, but A levels was a, it's a different kind of exam. It's it's tough. It's it's really difficult. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's one of the most toughest exams. It's competitive, uh, and and local doing local A levels is is really tough. Um, so. For A levels, well, what what happened to me was I, with my experiences, I had to switch from you know giving priority to swimming to giving priority to my academics, right? So I had to make certain adjustments um, in my in my training, in my in my study, um, to make sure that I accommodated that. Um, I would front load, you know, start off with uh, front load studying most of the stuff that I was weak in before, and push back most of the stuff that I was. That I thought was I was I could handle right. I pushed that back. I pushed most of the uh, hard hard studying to the beginning of the year. Um, had the always always have a conversation with your coach. Always have a conversation with your parents, with your teachers, and understand what you need to do in terms of how you are going to you know tackle and major exam and 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 an event uh, and if you're going to be a swimmer, right? For me, um, I every time I swam was off games. I had the you know the the baddest time timing of, you know ever right i mean the first time i did it i uh, in the middle of all of us the second time i do it um trials get postponed and it gets shifted right smack in the middle of my exam um so it gets postponed i had to switch my plans right so it the the day of the day of the day of the my econ paper is actually um my 400 meters yeah, my 400 meters trial was on at 4:30 in the evening, the day before my econ paper. Um, so, so you 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 can just imagine what what, what kind of panic that set in right halfway through the year. Someone just says, okay, no, it's going to be postponed for a while, and then I have to redo everything that I was doing, right? Um, so you, so my swimming, I phase, I, I tried phase, phasing it out. I tried dropping sessions, uh, you know, on on a on a more phased out manner, like like a monthly basis, like I was dropping one session. Uh, because I had to keep training. Um, I think I dropped it to something like three sessions. Um, I would pull out whatever workout that I could from uh, Julian used to give me workout. So I used to go back to St. Thomas's and swim whenever I could. Um, so every time I dropped my, uh, my workouts, I would, you know, substitute that with studying and tutoring because I, I didn't really go for, um, go for, um, Tuition when I was doing all of us, right? So because I just didn't have the time, um, and doing all of us, I had to actually, you know, doing multiple sports. I was playing water polo. I had to make a call. I had to drop it. Unfortunately, I mean, not the best decision, and my friends didn't really like it. But unfortunately, it's you know, it's what you have to do. You need to figure out if that's not uh, you. You were committed to something, then you need to make sure that that you follow through. And then I just couldn't find the time. I had to drop it. Um, Say likewise for my A levels, I did play polo, but I had to drop it at some one point because I just couldn't manage the time. Um, so, so so those those I would substitute certain sessions with um, land training, uh, but right throughout I would I would still swim because I had to swim because there's no choice. I had to, you know, make sure that I made it to the trial and qualify. Um, so. So long story short, I, I did qualify. I, I, I did qualify for uh, SAF. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a struggle, um, but I did. Um, I did well in my A levels, enough to get into uni. Um, the, the thing that I would take back from that is that, you know, if you do it properly, um, you can balance. Um, you know, for A levels, one thing that you really need to touch, and uh, I, I would like to speak to you on, and one one last point before I uh, before I go, I think I'm all, already putting on my time, is what kind of subjects do you do you pick? Um, see, after all of us, you you have a choice of subjects that you pick. Um, you know, my my cousins, my 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 aunties, my uncles, everyone's a doctor, so I should become a doctor. Um, is is not is not for you. You need as a swimmer to understand one is, is what's best for you. Um, what do you like to do? Um, um, is it the most thing for you? Um, and then pick what is, what is, what is right for you. And then, um, and then follow through with it and then pick a subject. If, if you are, if you are going to be serious about swimming and then you're going to swim after your A-level and you're planning to do that, 
then you need to pick, pick a subject that is more suitable for that type of uh, environment because you know i've seen a lot of athletes who pick you know bio maths you know i'm not saying that they are you know you get enough more people who do both and then then they go about it but you have to understand your strengths right um and what you're good at um, i mean they will go through year athletes go through a year year and a half year doing six months a year doing this and then they realize oh no this is not for me i can't manage the load right and then come back now you lost six months of your study time you are try to catch up and then you're trying to fit in and do your swimming schedule as well and then it, it, it becomes a real mess um so I'm, I'm in the interest of time i'm just i'm going to stop there because asha is up next and uh you know i'm, I'm looking forward to that session as well um just 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 final parting parting words from me is um uh you want to become you want to juggle this properly uh it's pretty simple um there's no one way to doing it you need to understand you need to figure out you need to figure out what you can do and how you can do it um it's it's simply an issue of time how you manage your time um it's work ethic once you figure out how you do it it's a work ethic it's discipline and it's character right and dedication to what you already set out to do and if you can do that uh, you managing your and being a student athlete should come to you naturally and it should be easy for you to actually do so so good luck um looking forward to um you answering any questions that you have going forward uh coach kasun over to you thank you ranga for those encouraging words uh, i think uh, he just spoke about how difficult his journey was and um if you have any questions i believe the chat box is open so if anyone wants to uh, direct any questions to coach ranga he you all can actually uh, use the chat box for that okay now we have the ever so inspiring dr asha divos to speak about her journey as a student athlete after leaving school dr asha divos is an internationally acclaimed sri lankan marine biologist ocean educator national geographic explorer and founder of oceans well a marine cons- conservation research and education organized organization based in sri lanka she has degrees from the university of st andrews university of oxford and the university of st andrews and 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 the university of western australia among all the awards she is most proud of being listed on the bbc 100 women 2018 list of most inspiring and influential women from around the world and being named named lanka monthly digest sri lankan of the year also in 2018 while she is incredibly passionate about leaving the planet a better place than she found it she is also aware the life is about balance staying fit and healthy is incredibly important because it helps her perform at her best even when it comes to her job whenever her schedule allows she participates in sports events such as the colombo 70.3 half ironman race and other local races because she enjoys cheering for and supporting her sporting communities i've been stalking her for the last 3 plus years and <laughs> i can guarantee you she will be she will inspire all of you to dream big and to understand that your potential for success is limitless the stage is yours asha okay hi everybody feels like a lot of pressure now to get this done <laughs> but um really great to be here and this is such a privilege for me uh i'm super excited to be amongst all of you uh, knowing how amazing all of you are how hard you work how hard you train in your daily lives how much you probably are missing that right now but i hope you are substituting it with other workouts that you can do at home um i used to play uh, water polo in school and i was also a swimmer and erang and i actually trained together i'm a few years older than him but we did train together when we were in school so that was a long time ago um and some of you might be wondering you know ayo why is this auntie here you know what is she going to tell us she's so much older but what i want to remind all of you is that before you know it you'll be out of school 
and you be in a position where you're trying to figure out what you want to do with, the, with your life. And I want to sort of through my story, tell you a little bit about why it's so important to maintain a sporting lifestyle, even once you're finished with these mega training sessions that you're going through right now. Okay. Um, it's not just enough to have a job. I don't, I totally believe that. Right. So I'm a marine biologist. Um, I spend a lot of time, you know, doing physically very, it's uh, very tiring things. Uh, but I also do a lot of work brain work and i would i'm what most people in the room would want to call a nerd and i'm totally fine with that because i am i have many degrees i love learning i'm still like right now during this period um i have been doing online courses because i want to broaden my brain and i want to make sure that um i am working at the best and i'm being the best version of myself throughout whatever i'm doing and so I want you to know that sporting is what helps me to actually achieve what I do. Um, it totally keeps me going. It keeps me sane. I'm going to talk, jump into that a little bit as well. And uh, so, yes, so I want you to listen. You may not use my advice right now. You may not even think about what I'm saying twice, but I'd ask you to file some of these words away, some of my stories. And maybe when you get to the point where you're leaving school and you're thinking, now, where do I go? How do I balance my life? I'd say, just reflect back on what I've talked about. Okay, so what I can tell you is um, I'm naturally pretty athletic. I love being active. But after school, I went off to university, to the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Um, it was gray and cold. Um, the pool was quite far away. I was walking and cycling everywhere. Uh, being outside was very, very cold. Um, so I sort of took a bit of a backseat with my athletic career, like all my sporting. I started to go to the gym. I decided I didn't like it because I'm not a person who likes to be confined indoors in a gym space. Um, I'm very much an outdoor person. I mean, as a marine biologist, it's really helpful to be outdoorsy. And um, so for me, just, you know, I, I couldn't find something that fit with me. I mean, I'd been a sprinter. I'd done 50 and 100 meter freestyle. And I was convinced, I told myself completely that I was only built to do sprints. I could not do any endurance. Therefore, I wasn't going to try. I wasn't even going to try to run long distances. So I, you know, like I couldn't really find my space in sports. I turned to student politics. Um, I took, did a lot of stuff in university, but so I diverted the time I used to spend on sport solely to other activities. Um, and then after my undergraduate, I went from uh, there to, I went to New Zealand. Okay. Because I now had learned all these things and my brain was exploding with knowledge about the marine world and all the stuff that I was always, I'd always wanted to learn. But I also realized that I needed to go and get some practical experience. Right. So I went to New Zealand and it is an amazing story of how I got there. But um, that's for another day. Um, but I, I went off to New Zealand and the first volunteer job that I had was basically trying to uh, protect the native birds from uh, things like rats. Okay. And to do that, basically, it doesn't matter what the technique was, but the fundamental thing was we would spend about eight hours a day climbing up steep inclines. Like I am not even exaggerating when I say an incline was like this and coming back down. Coming back down was not walking. You couldn't walk down those hills, those muddy slopes. You'd sit on your bum and you'd slide down on rocks, on, on twigs, on sticks. It was really painful, right? But at that point, I was like, wow, if I had only stayed a little bit fitter during my undergraduate, maybe this would have been a little easier, right? So, okay, no time to regret, right? Now, now that undergraduate period is over. Now I'm in this position where I'm now getting fitter. So, during this period with all that climbing up and sliding down, I, I did increase in my fitness quite a lot. And I started to realize how precious that feeling was. Okay. So I was like, wow, I can, I can do so much more now. And I was like, this is great. And I'm not saying I was a couch potato when I was in my undergrad. I was just not as active as I was used to being. So then I, um, I, so when I was in New Zealand, I was there for a while, but just, you know, the snippets that I think were of interest to all of you, um, in between volunteer jobs, I um, decided I wanted to do a big cycling trip, okay? So having that natural sporting athletic mindset meant that I believed that I could go on this big cycling trip. So I convinced my friend who was traveling with me and I said, okay, let's go. Um, it's a nine-day trip. We're going to cycle 70 kilometers a day. 
Um, and so then he turned around and he said, okay, so where are you getting this bicycle from? And I was like, ah, yeah, there's a kade, a shop that you can rent from. It turns out the bikes are terrible. And then he said, okay, but uh, have you cycled a lot in your life? And I said, uh, you know, I used to cycle in my garden when I was growing up. And he was like, okay, now how are you planning to do this? And I was like, you know what, how much does it matter, right? Like, I know I can do it. Because I know what my mindset is. And I know if I want to do something, I can set my mind. And I had the freedom to make my own decision at that point. So I was super excited, right? So I set up this trip. We did this incredible. We were cycling 70 kilometers a day. Uh, turns out New Zealand, there are no flat roads. So we were cycling up a lot of hills and down a lot of hills. That was my big learning. Um, and to me, it was so eye-opening because I had gone from, I'm just a short distance person. Yeah, I can probably do a very short run, probably cycle small distances. But I got on this bike and I had just pushed my endurance limits, right? So, so that was really important for me, for my kind of my own mindset. And then I, um, on the same, at the same time, a few months later, I was uh, eating some cereal out of a box. And at the back of the box, there was, uh, it was Special K cereal and it said Special K Women's Triathlon Series. So I was like, wow, like this sounds amazing, right? It was a 750 meter swim, 20 kilometer bike ride and a five kilometer run. What I want to point out is I hadn't swum in about maybe a good two years. I didn't own a bicycle because I'd rented it for that trip and it was now not mine. Um, I had never run long distance. I had run around the ladies college back garden, maybe maximum 800 meters. That was it because I was convinced for the longest time, not only was I not an endurance athlete, but I was also not a runner. That was what I had told myself. But now this, the thing that caught me with this event was that they were going to give me a free dry fit t-shirt if I entered. And what I can point out to all of you is that at that time, dry fit t-shirts weren't like, you couldn't just buy them anytime you went to the store. They were just brand new coming into the market. It was the thing to own. And I was like, I want that t-shirt, right? So for that reason, I decided I wanted to, to uh, enter. And I'm going to show you, this is the t-shirt. It's 18 years old. I still wear it because it was such a pivotal moment in my athletic career or my sporting career. Um, because I went for this event, I got a bicycle on the morning of the race, okay? So 20 kilometer bike ride. I had about a week to train to run up to five kilometers. That changed my life because I was like, wow, look at me, I can actually do this. I wasn't going into this race to win. And that's the fundamental thing. I was going into this race to beat my own demons, right? I was going in to challenge myself. So because of that, I, if I set my mind to it, I was like, I'm gonna try. What's the worst that can happen? And that's what I ask myself in any situation. I will try, but what's the worst that can happen? And usually the worst is really not that bad. Okay, fine. What's the worst that can happen? I didn't complete the race. What's going to happen? Nothing. Nobody's going to tell me off. No one's going to be embarrassed to talk about me. And I'm going to still love myself. So, right? What does it matter? So I went to this race. There were 2,000 women of every shape and size. I was so blown away. I was incredibly inspired just to be able to be there, to stand and to look around at these women. There were old women, young women, big women, small women, hardcore athletes, ladies who had literally just got off the couch and driven themselves to, you know, get fit enough to do this race. And I was thinking, wow, like this is so inspirational. And it was huge for me. Okay. So, I, as you know, I mean, I'm now on this track of being a marine biologist, huge dreams. And then I got a job on a whale research vessel that was going around the world. So I worked on it in the Maldives and Sri Lanka. And I was so glad that by the time I got onto this vessel, I had already got back into my fitness. Because what I can tell you is that being a marine biologist is a physically incredibly demanding job. I spend hours on boards walking around, standing in the hot sun, just standing for hours straight, eight, nine, 10 hours. It's not what the average person can do. And it's only because I've set my mind to it because I'm incredibly passionate because I'm driven to make a change in the world. Okay. So I set my goals, not because I want to win, but I want to be, I want to be the best version of myself 
but I also want to make sure I'm leaving this planet a better place than I found it. And so for me, being able to sort of do that is a huge thing. After I, um, after I finished there, I went off and did my master's at Oxford. Then I came back. And then my next goal for myself was I wanted to run five kilometers in 30 minutes. Okay. So at that time, uh, people didn't really run on the streets in Colombo like we do right now. Um, so I had to go to a gym and I had to train there. So I was very committed. I knew my goal. So I set my own goal. Nobody told me what my goal was. Nobody told me that I should do this or shouldn't do this. This is all my own decision. And I committed to it. And I went and I would run on this treadmill and I would keep building up and building up. And then finally race day came. And um, this was a race a long time ago. Um, and actually Shane, who spoke to you all a few days ago, was there uh, during that race. And uh, I did the five kilometers in 30 minutes. I was so proud of myself, but you won't believe it. I finished the race and I was so sad that the race was over. Okay. So then I thought to myself, wow, I can keep going. Like, that's kind of amazing. I never thought of myself as an endurance athlete, right? So now here I am just opening up my mind and realizing there's so much more to my capacity and potential than I even believed before. And so um, I actually walked back the last five kilometers. I went there and I finished the race and I walked back home because I was like, I just want to keep going, but you know, I don't want to stop. So after all this, I went off to uh, Perth in Australia to do my PhD. And that's really where my running career sort of began. I was doing my PhD. And what I can say is when you do your PhD, it can be very lonely. Uh, you're the only person studying this particular subject. Um, you are, there's no one to check in on you every day. It's not like you have a teacher, you have a supervisor who will maybe every few weeks, you'll have a meeting with that person and he'll just, he or she will just check in that you're getting your work done. But there's very little interaction on a daily basis apart from with friends. And so for me, I had to break my day up because otherwise you'd sit at the desk forever because there was no interval bill. There was no end of school bill. It was really what you wanted to do with your time. And I knew that if I kept just sitting for 10, 12, 14 hours straight, I would probably like wipe myself out and I would burn out and I wouldn't be able to have a long career in marine biology. So I started to run. I saw a four kilometer race. I decided to sign up for it. I convinced a bunch of girls um, to do it too. And we had this group of four girls and we would run. And we'd go on these runs together and it became this community thing. And that's the first time I felt like in my adult life, what sport could bring me uh, in, in a different way. It was this sense of community. And what I think was beautiful about athletes is that um, with athletes, you know, we don't care if you came to, you know, for your, for your training session on a broken bicycle or if you walked or if you came in a BMW. It doesn't matter what t-shirt and shorts you're wearing because the most important thing is you turned up for your session. The most important thing is that you're passionate about being there. And this passion is what brings us together, okay? This common love for a sport that makes us happy but gives us time with each other and like-minded people. So that was really great. I started running. I started doing long races in the three and a half years I was there. I built up to doing half marathons. Um, in that time, also, I joined a, a squad called Swim Smooth, which is actually one of the most famous squads out there. It's uh, the um, partner for the International Triathlon Union. Um, so it's a great squad. The coach was wonderful. Um, I, went for, I went to try this squad. It was a master squad. And I was like, well, let me go see what it's like. And you, you know, what I can tell you is I was inspired beyond belief because I was one of the younger people in this master squad, but I was also one of the slower people. All these older people, right, had, were racing all open water races over two kilometers. They were doing 20 kilometer races, 30 kilometer races. They were swimming the English Channel. The lady who has the record for the oldest woman to swim the English Channel, and she's done it multiple times, was training in my squad okay so i would now go for this to squad because i wanted to be inspired by these people i wanted to be like them when i got older right that was that's my goal is to be as committed to my own health and fitness as all of them when i get older but they used to they were so kind to me right and as i swam with them they were so encouraging and that's the other thing about sporting communities everybody wants everyone to do better right uh, we're not competing for a gold medal. We're not competing for a time or a place. We're just trying to better ourselves. And so it's easy to be non-competitive in that environment, but also drive yourself. 
and everyone can help. And so they used to, they used to call me sunshine because at five o'clock in the morning, I'd be super happy. Even if my hands had been frozen on my bicycle as I cycled. And uh, it was just a really wonderful group of people to be part of, right? So that sense of community has been a very strong thing for me. Um, and then even at that time, um, I started taking part in Ironman 70.3 races. Okay, so that's a half Ironman. It's a, and I will explain to you how I took part. 1.9 kilometer swim, um, 90 kilometer bike ride, and a 21 kilometer run. Now, to be clear, when I say I took part, I would take part in a relay. Okay, so I would just do the swim part because I knew I could finish 1.9 kilometers, no problem, right? With as, with as little or as much training as I could get. And um, again, I couldn't train a lot for this because the race was in May. I would come back to Sri Lanka at this time for my research. So I was out on the water on boats. You know, you can't really get much training in um, for about three months. I'd go back in April to Perth and then I would have about a month to kind of like get my endurance up and train to finish that 1.9 kilometers in, a, in a, um, a good time because I didn't want to let my teammates down, right? So now I'm committed not just to myself, but also committed to my teammates because I know they've been working hard for me, right? Now remember all of this is a voluntary thing. No one's asking us to do it. No one's forcing us to do it. No one's paying us to do it. No one's giving us awards to do this. We're doing it for ourselves and now for each other. So I did that race three times. I kept going back because Baselton is one of the fastest Ironman races in the world. Um, but the, again, community. And you know what? You see people of different shapes and sizes taking part in this event just to do it for themselves. And I thought to myself, you know, one day I want to be one of those people. I want to be one of those people who completes the whole half Ironman. But I think I need a six-month period to train up all three um, legs and make sure I can do it properly. Okay. After Perth, I moved to California. Um, I didn't, uh, I, I was not doing anything too competitive. I wasn't swimming because the pool was up a hill, a six kilometer hill. So to get to campus was difficult, but I was surfing a lot um, because I love being outside and I love being on the water. I was running, I was hiking and I would cycle everywhere. So in all, every time I've lived abroad, I've only had a bicycle. So I've had to figure out how to get around on my bike, right? Which has been really great. Um, and then in 2015, I moved back home permanently. And at that time I moved back and I had lived a pretty like nomadic life, right? Like I had moved from home at 18, then I went to uh, Scotland and then I went to New Zealand and I was on the ocean and then I went to Oxford and I came back for a few years. Then I went to uh, Australia and then I went to the US. And so it was, it, my life had felt very disrupted. The one thing that um, was keeping me going through this was this sense of commitment to myself, which was including doing my sport and staying healthy and fit. And so to get that stability, I decided I wanted a routine and I wanted to commit myself to more regular um, sporting events, uh, sporting training. So then I found a running group, which I've, uh, Columbus City Running, which I've helped to grow into something really amazing with some of the most amazing people I've ever met. And I went, came back to squat. So some of you might have seen me at the pool. I come for the master's squad after the morning squad that you guys have. Um, I choose to be there, right? So um, I, it's a voluntary decision. But, you know, all of us who come for that squad, we don't have any races to take part in. But we want to just do it, right? So we come, we come for each other. We come because it makes us feel good. And um, running and swimming started to be really good. They started to work really well because the running, a, that's an impact sport. So you obviously impact your legs and stuff. And when I used to get in the pool, no matter how hard the coaches were training me, I still felt my body felt a lot better. Um, and that helped my running. So they started to be really complimentary and it felt great. Um, and, you know, like I said at the start, like, you know, one of the things that when I was uh, younger, a lot of people, uh, you know, would say, you, you know, you're built, you're like, you're built quite square, you know, you're like very muscular, not very ladylike, very athletic. And it didn't bother me because, you know what, my body is built to do what I wanted to do, right? It's not built to a mold. It's not built to fit some, what someone else thinks it should do. It's built to do what I want it to do, right? And it does everything I wanted to do. I, the kind of work I do, if I didn't have the strength I have, the base strength I have in my body, I wouldn't be able to do the work I do. And that's been incredibly important. Okay. So basically this continuous 
training and recognition of my mind capacity, what I can do for myself and the fact that I can make my own decisions and the fact that my body has immense capacity beyond what I first thought it had, has just opened up amazing doorways for me. Um, my, I have, you know, lots of reasons. Okay. And I know for a fact, I don't want to be a pro athlete, right? Like that's a fundamental, like I'm not interested. What I want to do is I want to be a world class, class marine biologist and I want to leave the planet a better place than I found it. But sport is what's going to help me to get there. And I know that for a fact because I've, I'm experiencing it right now. So just to kind of sum up, okay, what are the benefits? Why do I do what I do? Okay. Um, at this age, what I can tell you is life can be crazy. And I know your lives are crazy and I'm not discounting that. But at this age, there's so much going on. Everybody wants something. You're kind of constantly trying to like make sure you're making, you know, I, have, I run an organization. I have staff. I have to make sure that I'm, uh, managing to pay their salaries. At the same time, I'm creating new projects. At the same time, I'm trying to save the oceans. At the same time, I'm educating the public. So I have a lot of things going on. And for me, the time I do use to make do my sport is a timeout. It's a space. It's my Asha time. Okay. So even if I come to the pool, if I go for a run, quite often I run on my own. It's that time for me to just be like, you know what, switch off. And enjoy. We all need that in our lives, right? I do meditate also in the mornings uh, for about 20 minutes. Uh, again, that is for me to create space and to collect my energy, right? Um, I wouldn't be able to work at the level I work at if I wasn't giving myself timeouts, right? So I don't believe in working like 20 hour days. I think that's nuts. Don't believe it when people say, oh, I have to work for 15, 20 hours. That is not okay. You're going to burn yourself out. Uh, and really affect your body. So think about balance. And I'm going to come to what has been said before by Julian, actually. Um, balance is incredibly important to me. Even my staff, I tell them, you work from nine to five. I want you to go home at five. And I want to do whatever you have to do with your life. You're not committed to work beyond those hours, right? And that's important because I think it's important for me. It's important for anyone who works with me. Um, I, it's given me a ability to explore. So I travel a lot. Normally, obviously not in this situation, I might travel every three weeks for about a week, okay, a go abroad. Now, one thing I can do is run, right? All I need is a pair of shoes and a mat and I'm out. And this has allowed me to explore so many countries in, in amazing, amazing ways, okay? So um, seeing them in a way that I never would have seen if I hadn't, you know, got out and learned to run and fall in love with the sport. It's given me community. It's given me a lot of inspiration. Um, and also it's given me um, the ability to basically um, realize like the work I do, we sit on boats a lot. We spend a lot of time at sea. It can be dangerous. My boat can sink. I want to make sure I can save my team and I can save myself if that's the uh, case. Um, and I think the other thing that it's taught me is that my body is already primed to say yes to a lot of amazing experiences that I wouldn't be able to if I didn't have a consistent routine. And I train about seven to eight times a week amongst all my work. Um, and if I didn't have that regular training, I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things. This is what allowed me to actually take part in the Colombo 70.3 half Ironman last year. I completed that goal, which was amazing for me. I finished the fastest Sri Lankan woman and I qualified to go for the world championships, which was really quite an amazing thing. I wasn't expecting that. But the catch is that I only, I had, remember I said I wish I could take part in and I have six months to train. I didn't have six months to train. Um, I actually trained for the event in less than a month uh, because I got on a bicycle in November and then in January I went out into the field. I was at sea. So for a month I didn't have consistent training, but I would continue to do hit workouts and strengths like what you guys have been doing in this time. Um, to keep my body going. And then I came back in February and I basically went out and I was able to get to the start line and I saw all the people supporting me and there was a real, it felt magical. Again, I wasn't trying to win. I was just trying to do this for myself. Uh, I had a setback. Uh, I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to go to Antarctica, but for various reasons, I didn't go at the time. And so to regain my self-confidence and the belief that I controlled my own life, I decided to do this race. So I was so happy. I smiled through the entire race. Every single uh, photo that has, was taken of me at that race, I had this massive big smile because I was achieving a goal for myself. Um, so just now to wrap, okay? A few quick, simple tips, just so you can maintain a balanced life as you keep going. 
I'd say the first thing is be goal oriented. What is it you want, right? Like you have to decide what you want. Now I know for a fact, I know what I want. I want to save the planet. I want to save the oceans, but I want to do it and I want to be the best at it. And to do that, I know I need sports. I need that outlet. I need that physical exertion. I need to stay on top of my game. Uh, the second thing I'd say is um, always like plan the night before what you're going to do, do, the, do the next day because then you don't have any excuses. Then when you wake up, you're not like, mm, I wonder what I'm going to do today. Um, I have so many options. You waste a lot of time. So even when I'm traveling the night before, I'll look at a map. I'll decide where I'm going to run. I have my shoes and everything ready. So when I wake up in the morning, no excuses. I'm out the door. I'm ready and I'm out the door, right? That way you don't neglect sports uh, and that's when you get to after school age it's very easy to like neglect sports because there's nobody you don't have people telling you waking you up in the morning and sending you for taking you for sport you have to do it from within it comes from within right the third thing is as julian was saying eight hours sleep i get eight hours of sleep it's incredibly important to me to function both in my work and my sport um i I try, I, I'm an early riser, so I wake up at about 4.30 or 5. So before that, I count back, I go to sleep at the appropriate 9, you know, normally about 9, 9.30. So maybe seven and a half, eight hours, but it's so important. I cannot tell you how incredibly important it is. Switch off your devices. These things are really disruptive to your sleep patterns. You wake up fresh, you wake up ready for the day, and you can take on any challenge if you've had those eight hours sleep. And scientifically, it's um, proven that it's important for you. And my fourth tip, which is also something that I know the coaches have been talking about, is I walk around with a water bottle at all times, guys. Partly because I want to save the planet. I do not buy plastic water bottles. But partly because hydration, that's the other thing that allows you to perform, whether it's your work, whether it's school, or whether it's sport. Okay? So with that, I want to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, I hope you will gain some insight um, I think there's probably things in there for anyone who's an athlete, even right now, um, even while you're in school. But I hope there's something that you will hold. And maybe some of the parents can take some of this advice and apply it to your own lives. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asha, for those encouraging words. Um, now let's move on to the Q&A session. Okay, um, if Ranga and Asha, both of y'all can come on your video mode as well. See your beautiful faces. Where's the most beautiful person? Julian. Hello. Ah, hi. Thanks for the compliment. Yeah, I'm returning the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> one for one. Yeah. You're very revengeful. In a good way. Ooh, me? Thanks. Thank you. If it's me, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, right. I think the first question is for Aranga. Um, sir, what if you are playing yeah. two sports, but you also want to move higher in the academic level? What if you don't want to give up either? Oh, okay. Uh, good question. Um, I think I think at some uh, it depends how, how how old you are, right? And then and, and at some given point, you're going to have to uh, as as you get older and you and you have more challenging exams and academics and all that coming in. Um, it, it becomes a matter of how how much of time you have to spend on both both sports or you know how you how you manage and share that time, right? Um, so. You can do both. I, I mean, there are there are people who do both. You know, um, you study, you do the multiple sports, and, and and excel at it also. But if you really take a look at it, that's that's a very small, you know, minority of people that actually can you know excel at both. Uh, for the more you know common people like me, uh, it's it's very difficult, right? Uh, at some given point, you need to make a call. Uh, you need to understand um, what can, if you can manage it. I mean, then then that's a different story. But um, at some given point, I feel that you need to make make a call, and then then 
that call has to be, you know, that doesn't, doesn't mean that it has to be a call that, you know, uh, you just make just for the sake of making that call. It can be something that uh, you need to do. And then it's something that, uh, that, that you decide and then it's more suited to you. Thank you, Aranga. Can, can I ask Aranga a question on, on these lines? Because this might be important. Aranga, you obviously had pressure with yes. studies and your sport. You set your targets. You decided to yeah. do a lot on your own and plan your um, timetable. Um, yeah. I mean, were you under pressure? Question one is, were you under pressure from any side to perform and to make sure you get into the SAF team and you make sure you get into university? That's the one. There, it's not about your own pressure, but that's your own pressure is always a good motivator. But did yeah. you ever get that pressure? That's number one. Yeah. Were you doing it because others wanted you to do this and achieve this? And two is a ranga. This question is something I'm battling. In case you had not got into this half team, after all that effort you put in, and you came third at the trials, I know you won the 400 yeah. star at the trials. And yeah. in, what if you didn't get into university? Would you have considered yourself a failure? Because yes, we talk about successful stories and if the outcome is successful, we'll say, wow, look at this story. How many others even try that and have tried that and not made yeah. those targets? So is it more successful to consider the, the, the fact that you went through this? Um, yes, on an A-level, you can always resit for it. A soft games comes every second year if it ever does. You can, you know, if you don't get into the team this yeah. time, you can always try the next time. But, yeah, so in case you fail, would you consider yourself a failure? Would you have regretted this? Um, okay, so so the first one, um, Julian, I, I, I mean, I, I just trained with you, right? I had no given point was I ever under pressure to get into a, get into a team. Um, I was never at any given point under any kind of pressure at home or otherwise to you know, push myself to get certain results that I wanted to get. I mean, uh, it was never there for me for, I mean, do I look back now and think, okay, maybe have I, have I been pushed a little bit more in, in certain areas? Could I have done better? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Um, but then again, at what cost? Um, but I was never under any, any kind of pressure uh, other than myself. Um, I always push myself to do you know, and then I had targets that I had to meet. My my parents, <laughs> my parents never. I said, you know, Julian, my parents haven't even seen the pool that I trade in, right? And the only time my mom ever got got to the pool is one time when I got suspended. I Tara suspended me, and that's the only time my parents had to come, and that's the only time we saw the pool that I actually trade in. So, um, do I do I do I do I do I feel if my parents were a little bit more involved, should could I have gone a little bit further? Um, it, it's a it, Maybe, but would I change anything? I, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, it is what it is, and uh, I'm glad things worked, worked out the way it did. And the answer to your second question is all that hard work, and um, maybe if, if I didn't uh, didn't get to the team, I, I mean, um, what 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 we don't see is the story that I related to you was was a success story, but in between all of that was massive failures, right? Um, that's what led to that particular success, right? Um, I failed multiple times, um, studies wise, um, sports wise, uh, multiple, multiple times, and then finally clicked at that particular point. So that is a success story. But what you don't see is what led it up to that. And it was absolute disappointment or over disappointment, over disappointment. I used to fall sick for meets. I used to, you know, absolute mess up. Um, so it was difficult, right? Uh, and, and if I didn't uh, make it, um, honestly, of course, I would have been disappointed. I would have been, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I would have been disappointed if, if it didn't make it. But, but I think all those disappointments that I had along the way uh, conditioned me to be, you know, to deal with it much better than, than, you know, when you're conditioned with success, right? Throughout, you, you tend to take that defeat pretty badly, right? You have to condition yourself you know, at some point to actually take that and, and move on with life. And I don't think, uh, by being disappointed, I don't think I would have, you know, uh, looking back right now, I, 
I don't think that I'll be good for it either. If it didn't work out that way, it did. Can I quickly ask another question? Just um, sorry, I know the swimmers have asked plenty questions, but this is for all to hear. Ranga, did you swim? Studies, I don't know. Did you swim because it was more fun or because you wanted to win? Because of your friends at the pool. Which was oh, the bigger reason you swam? Oh, my friends. Oh, my friends, my friends. I, I had my friends there. Uh, my, my, for me, swimming was my, you know, like Asha touched on it, right? It's, 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 it's your release, right? It's, it's where you, you know, it's your second home. Um, you know, it's where all my friends were. I loved swimming. Uh, workouts were terrible, but I loved to be there. People were, uh, you know, that's where all my friends were, right? That's, that's, that's where, that's why that was my second family. And um, never, I don't know. I mean, of course, there was a little bit of, you know, I, I, rivalry and, you know, I wanted to win and all that, that, that has always been there. But, but mainly for me was, I, I found a lot of fun. That, that was my release and that was my, uh, you know, happy place to go to. Thank you. Okay, um, I think uh, we have, we'll move on to Dr. Asha for this question. I think it's important that it's answered. Um, uh, dear Madam, are you rich to go to these countries? Okay, that's a good question. Interesting question. Good question. So I'll tell you what my secret is. Uh, and it doesn't involve being rich. It involves being really passionate and really committed and working super, super hard. Uh, for my degrees, I worked so hard that I, um, I got financial help from the universities to go to these places. Um, and it's not impossible. I think anyone, if you find something that you love and you are determined to do it, you can, you'll work hard. I promise you, my parents always said to me, do what you love and you'll do it well. And I, that is, those are the words that I carry with me all the time because I was doing what I loved and I would work so hard to achieve it. And so I was lucky enough to get these scholarships. Um, and then now I travel all the time and I do that because I've worked so hard in my life. I still do that. Um, I get invited all over the world to do research, to, uh, sit on committees, to make big decisions for our oceans. And when you get invited like that, people pay for you to travel. So that's where I'm right now, but I can tell you, it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. You do have to put in the work. Uh, like Iran also said, it's all about how, what you put in, you get out. That's it. Remember that. So if you're willing to only put in like 10 minutes of energy into something, you're going to get 10 minutes of energy back. But if you put your whole life into it, you'll get an amazing, amazing life journey. In the day. Thank you. Um, so this question is for to Eranga. Um, so I do three sports. When I grow up, do I need to choose one? I am 11 years old. This is interesting, Atomian. These guys are famous for doing multi sports. <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah, so 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 you're you're 11 years old. <laughs> so you got you you got a long way to you know do as many sports as you want if you're 11 years old. I I, I think you should. Uh, but like I said earlier, <laughs> the 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 older you get and the more responsibilities and the exams and things that you start doing, at some point I think you need to uh, my opinion that is that you need to. Uh, you know, pick and choose of what you're going to actually do. If you're going to excel in, in certain areas, uh, and if swimming is your is your passion, and if swimming is what you want to do, and if that's something that you want to excel in, um, then you need to you know spend a little bit more time. Um, so, how do you divide your time is going to be a question. So, doing three, four sports, uh, and if it's one thing that you need to excel in, then you need to spend a little bit more time. So, you might really want to think as you get older, um, how, how you're going to pick and choose what you want to do. Thank you. Uh, so this would be the last question uh, for the day. I think uh, it's addressed to both of you. Um, Madam coach, Madam slash coach. Thank you for these inspiring words. I learned many things from today. You speak wide, wise words and many different possibilities to make my future a better outcome. Now straight to the question. If you are planning your future lifestyle in a different way that provides the good life for you, but your parents doesn't allow your better lifestyle, but need to follow their future outcomes instead of following your passion. How do you plan your future lifestyle on your way or without following your passion, but what your parents say? 
should i follow your uh, should follow your passion even though it's good or bad or your parents way what might be a bad choice too so basically uh, the question is i mean i i assume you understand the question whether it's your parents passion or your own passion what you should follow and how you should make that decision um i can go uh, i can start um so what i can say is when i was 18 and deciding what i wanted to do um by that point i decided i wanted to be a marine biologist um everyone around me was like what what are you going to do with that degree you're not going to make money you're not going to be rich you're not going to be able to you know there were so many things that everybody was telling me that i couldn't do if i became a marine biologist and also marine biology didn't exist in sri lanka at the time so i decided at that point and I, what i can say is my parents they just said do what you love you'll do it well but of course there was a lot of pressure right i still had to prove to them that the choice i was making for myself was the right choice you know they they gave me some freedom but of course if i wasn't going to work hard or if i was going to mess up for sure they would be into it so i decided that the only way to convince people was to take baby steps make small goals along the way to achieve that bigger goal of what i wanted to do with my life and every step of the way worked so hard that i was proving that it was something that could be done it was something that could be a real career because sometimes like what i can say is parents will come to you um <laughs> ask you something else because it's what they know and they might be afraid to uh let you go off and do something completely different that they're unfamiliar with so it comes from a place of concern uh you have to remember that and so it really is about a mutual understanding that you come through together and it's a journey of convincing them of what you want so take those steps uh figure out what you want to be where you want to go and take baby steps that you can prove yourself along the way um and take them on the journey and share that with them you know share that joy share every step with them and once they start to understand a bit more why you want to do it what you want to do um i know of many people who've managed to convince their parents um that what they want to do is sensible and it makes sense by just making sure that they're sharing with their parents this journey uh, and taking them every step of the way and having a lot of con- conversation communication is really important well i mean um I mean, what more can I add to that, right? <laughs> Asha, Asha basically covered most of it. So, uh, so, so yeah, it's it's true, right? Um, I mean, your, your parents. Uh, I mean, there was a session in which Shehan, Coach Shehan, also touched on. You you don't, um, you know, parents try and live their dreams through their children, right? Um, it it shouldn't be the case. Unfortunately, it does happen. Um, you have to understand, uh, like I said, you you need to have that conversation. You need to be have be able to have that relationship with your parents. You need to, um, you know, um, have those difficult conversations in terms of, uh, you know, how how what what their passions are, and and you convince them. Um, but simple answer would be, uh, for me personally, would be, um, you know, follow follow your dreams, follow your passion. I think that that's just it for me. Okay thank you uh, Ranga and thank you Asha for those uh, encouraging words uh, I think there are a few more questions but what we will do is as we've said before uh, I will forward it to them and they will answer it and we will forward it uh, back to all the swimmers through their coaches so if there um, right, can I disturb here uh, yeah. all the coaches have committed to answer their um, the questions that have not been answered um and i was just thinking something we coaches might talk i like the swimmers to hear this parents to hear this maybe lockdown is there for a few more weeks few more months we don't know but maybe have another session just a thought where all these questions will be answered and for those who want to listen in listen and maybe more questions but with that dr asha or aunty asha or we adults say ape asha I see so many questions, and and she's so busy. I just took a, s- a screenshot of me with Asha and the uh, uh, coach Arang and Kasun here. That's gonna such a privilege to be in this forum. <laughs> Kasun, you and Arang must feel the same. I hope. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, but Auntie Asha is gonna be inundated with questions, and please, please, yeah, 
yeah quite a few have asked uh, how to be a marine biologist and all that so i think uh, you will be happy to answer that later on i ha actually have a video on that on my on a ocean swell youtube channel on okay. uh, we'll pass over the link so we can send them round and then i i'm happy to answer some of the other questions as well okay so but okay so uh, guys i think uh, now uh, we move on to uh, the uh, winners from yesterday's question uh, so uh, the winners from yesterday are so we have kiara fernando duneli senaratna and siara so basically you can collect your gifts from the glory swim shop at spathodia avenue colombo 5 uh please take your identification so uh, you can pick up your gift uh, you can do it next week onwards okay so now we move on to today's question um which is what is the name of the marine Con conservation research and education organization founded by dr ashri vox uh so i think she just mentioned it just about 30 seconds ago she mentioned it so maybe you can uh, jot in your answer uh, please mention your ID, uh, your parents id number and your name full name would be preferable because without the id number we will not uh, take uh, accept any answers so i'll give maybe a minute for you all to uh, include the answers the most popular question it looks like <laughs> okay so uh, i would like to thank everyone who was here today i would like to a special thanks to arang uh, and dr asha for being with us today uh, you know especially uh, all of you are quite busy so it has been a privilege for us to have you here and uh, i hope it was a you know, motivating session for all the swimmers who uh, who was listening in uh, i was telling the coaches as well asha is someone who would charge for to speak and she is someone who has spoken at ted talk so we basically have royalty here um so i think it was a encouraging and inspiring session for all of us uh, i would like to thank our sponsors sasajan schools 6 plus and sasajan and our gift sponsors glory swim shop so tomorrow we will have mr udesh perera speaking on injury prevention and then we will have the big boss uh, himself mr julian boli and shamli nawaz speaking to us on swimmer parent and 3d coaching and udesh uh, udesh will speak before you all yeah i i spoke and um, actually we have a small surprise tomorrow we will also have a special guest performance at at the end of the session so uh, i would uh, ask you all to log in at 650 so we can start at 7 uh, so tomorrow session will actually go on till about 830 Uh, because it's our last session of this knowledge series so log in and uh, please pass the message to your other swimmers or your friends as well so they also can log in and we can have a good participation and uh, uh, end it on a high okay um, i would like to wish everyone a pleasant evening good night bye bye